Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and welcome to my February 2019 horoscope report for you. Go to AnnieHelpsYou.com to check out my blog and all kinds of other goodies on my site, including enrollment for my astrology apprenticeship program if you'd love to learn astrology with me. Also, if you'd love to be a coach as your profession and bring your business online, my coach certification and online business training course is enrolling now. And I have launched my new publishing company, Luminous Life Publishing Books and Beyond, and along with it, my new book, Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life and the World in 28 Days. So you can see more about this uh, prayer book that is for all denominations at AnnieHelpsYou.com. So February is one of my most favorite months of the whole year of 2019 for so many things, for launches. Also, we've got three times the sweetness, three times as many sweet aspects this month. It is an amazing time to do anything important uh, until around February 18th when we start shifting into Mercury retrograde shadow period. So I've got lots and lots of details about my favorite days to do important things, plus a massive amount of details specifically for you and your sign. So let's look at those details now. Hello, Cancer friends. Happy February. Okay, so this month I want to focus on two planets, Venus and Saturn, and what they're doing for early, middle, and late degree placements. And so I'm going to give you some good astrology lessons in here. Obviously, you've probably figured out I'm, astrology, I'm an astrology teacher and I focus more on not just telling you what potentials may come, but why that is the most fun for me. So first, we have to establish whether you're an early, middle, or late degree placement for cancer because as you will see, this turns out to make a big difference with timing um, of the transits and how we're experiencing them. Okay, so you can tell from this grid early degree placements, if you're watching for your birthday or June born, if you know your sun sign or if you're watching for your rising or moon, the degree for early is zero to nine degrees. Middle degree placements, your birthdays are around July 1st through 10th. And if you're watching, you know, if you know your degree or you're watching for your rising or moon, middle is 10 to 19 degrees. Late degree cancer is around July 11th through the rest of the sign. Or if you're, you know your sun sign degree or you're watching for your moon or rising, then 20 to 29 degrees is for the late. Now, if you miss that, then just rewind it so you can get that little lesson so you can see where you're at. Um, and then you will better be able to utilize the information. Okay, so I always see these planets as people. We're looking at this chart and it's like, I always say, you can look at this and be like, ah... I'm going to run screaming and get out of here, right? <laughs> because there's just so much going on. But when you break it down into little pieces that you can better understand, then it's easier to start to apply the rest of this. So the planet energies are like people and they are like archetypes. So to better understand what a planet can do here in the sixth house, we're going to look at the sixth and the seventh house predominantly for um both for all early, middle, and late degree cancer placements, but for different reasons, which I'll outline. We want to know what the energy is of this person when they come to this place in your chart. So the way I always think of this is <laughs> for my friends who have watched or, or not, not watched, knew, knew about Clue, the game Clue, then I always see the planet. Okay, so Clue is, Clue is basically a murder mystery game. And it eventually turned into a movie and other stuff. But it was a board game originally. So the planet is the who did it. <laughs> the sign it's moving through is the with what. And the house is where. Okay, so Colonel Mustard did it with the candlestick in the conservatory. <laughs> so that's how you can kind of translate these, all, all of that. So now to understand what Venus can bring in this, in this area, we have to better understand Venus. When we're talking about planets like Venus that move pretty quickly, there's a short period of time that its influence is going to take place over, like weeks. It'll take place over weeks. But when we're talking about outer planets, which we're also going to talk about one of those, Saturn, it's going to be in an area for years. So... 
Venus is here, it's going to smoke past Saturn and just be on its way woo, and go over around a bunch of times while Saturn is still just kind of lurking around here. So it makes a big difference the, um, you know, the speed that the planets are traveling because then that, then we know if the themes that are being brought up by their presence in the, in wherever the area is, is going to be a short term presence or a long term presence. So I want to go into the details about the archetypal energies of Venus and Saturn. So you'll get a quick, um, necessary astrology lesson here. And then we'll come back and apply what, what's happening for you. Okay, so let's check out Venus first. And then right after that, I'll give you the story of Saturn. And then we'll come back to these charts and I'll show you what's happening. Okay, so when we're thinking about Venus or any planet, we really, it really helps to understand the energetic expressions of the planets, the archetypal expressions of the planets by thinking of them as people. They have personalities. So each planet has multiple facets that make up its expression. Okay, so Venus always reminds me of my grandma Marge. And my grandma Marge, if you can imagine, okay, she's Italian. She's um, always, she was always seemed like she was smaller than me, even when I was a child. So when I would come to see her, she would run up to me with her hands up in the air, grab me by the face, kiss me on the mouth, say, I love you. She'd also tell, tell all the grandkids how beautiful they are. Venus rules love. Venus rules compliments and self-esteem. She would then slip $5 in my pocket. Venus also rules money. And she would come at me with a fork and a meatball and pop a meatball in my mouth. <laughs> Venus also rules sustenance, physical sustenance, and also emotional sustenance. So that feeling of being cared for, of being full, of being um, content. And it also rules aesthetics. So when we go into her house, there'd be this feeling of comfort and harmony and peace, which are also things that Venus rules. So it's like a cozy, warm, safe place with all of these energies wrapped up into it. So now you can understand Venus better and you can always think of my grandma March. So whenever Venus is moving through an area, it, the energy of the sign it's moving through will, um, you know, flavor all of this. And then of course the house that it's moving through will show the field of experience that Venus will bring these potential blessings to for the individual. Okay, so the house placement is going to be different for different people. And so we look to see what house Venus is moving through to see where these energies are having an increase in likelihood of manifesting. Okay, so understanding the archetype of the Saturnian energy can help us understand the potentials that Saturn brings when it is moving through wherever it is in the chart for us. So every placement, every sign, every planet has this range of potential expressions from lowest to highest. On the lower end, Saturn can bring hardship and difficulties and obstacles and challenges feeling like you're walking through mud. It also very often comes with the experience of pressure. Pressure always makes me think of the pressure necessary to make a diamond because that's what Saturn's trying to do. It's not just trying to torture you. You know, Saturn is the taskmaster. It's stern. So you can kind of just imagine. I always think of like a stern father or really grandfather, like a, a grandfatherly energy that's stern. The energy um, often comes with wealth, the accomplishment of um, the Saturnian path. It's a wealthy taskmaster, you know, stern and just sort of serious. So that it brings that energy. However, 
there is the other side. Okay, so the upper end of Saturn is that it can bring accomplishments. Okay, I'm going to just abbreviate accomplishments. Fruition. It can bring things into form. So ideas, wishes, dreams that are up in the ethers, you know, just kind of in the clouds. It can like gel them into form. And so Saturn transits can actually be times of great accomplishment, recognition, and gelling, like coming together. Uh, many people experience Saturn transits as some of the best times of their life in that area of experience it's moving through. So what makes the difference between this side and this side? Usually I have found it's unresolved issues from the past because these planets will test weak links. And if you have a perception, if you have anything that you brought with you from your genealogy, from your upbringing, from past life, however you want to look at this, any of these levels, Saturn's going to test these weak links. And it's going to want you to apply the taglines of Saturn, which are hard work, persistence, consistency, and when you apply these energies to whatever area that it's, you know, working with you, then you can convert these challenges into these outcomes. And that's really the point of it. So Saturn will show you the areas you still have to work and Saturn will show up for you the areas where you have done work and convert them into outcomes. Saturn can definitely um, affect serotonin levels. You know, it can be depressive as well. So for certain people, this may become relevant. But again, the consistency of, first of all, getting health back on track, um, or the consistency of inner work. Inner work is where you acknowledge that we live in a holographic reality and everything inside the person, oh, going on all in there, all in your being, reflects outside into the external experience and that's what we experience as our life. So when you own this part of it and you shift on the inside, then you change what you're experiencing on the outside or how you experience what's going on in the outside. Okay, so understanding these energies of Saturn, then you can bring this whole equation to whatever field of experience Saturn is moving through. We look at the sign, and then that will be the global experience for everybody, Saturn moving through the sign that it's in. And then we look to the house to see for the individual signs what area of experience Saturn is bringing all of these Saturnian stories to. Okay, so now you understand the energy of my grandma Marge and Saturn the Taskmaster better, and now we can talk about where they are for who. So for at the beginning of the month, every placement, early, middle, and late degree Cancer will have Venus in the sixth. Okay, so you can see Venus here, but it's close to this line. So very early on, depending on exactly what your early degree placement is, whether it'll be a few days or a week or something, Venus is going to finish its influence in the 6th and it's going to move to the 7th. For your middle degree placements, you have longer. You can see Venus is set back. So you've got weeks here, depending on your exact placement. So you have longer of February with Venus in the 6th house. And your late degree placements, see how it drops back for you? So all of February, pretty much, for you late degree placements, you're going to have the influence of Venus in the sixth house. Okay, so now let's see where Saturn's going to be, and then we'll come back and, and start to um, put these pieces together to see what these potentials are. So when we're looking at an outer degree or an outer planet, you can, you know, like we talked about before, it's going to be a big difference. So... Saturn is in the seventh for early degree placements, and it's been there for probably 2018 and definitely 2019. You middle degree placements, you didn't start to have Saturn really getting into this place until the end of 2018 or the beginning of 2019. And some of you later middle degree placements, it's still here, kind of just like below the line. But when something is right near here like this, you feel it in both places. So a lot of middle degree people, you're feeling sixth and seventh house pressures and manifestations from Saturn at the same time. That is current. But you later degree placements, you can see Saturn has a while. It moves very slowly. 
So Saturn has a while before it gets there. So the early degree placements went through the crossroads of Saturn crossing over the seventh house sometime last year. The middle degree placements, you're going through the crossroads of Saturn moving over the seventh, this line, you know, recently, and you later degree placements, you have a crossroads ahead of you when Saturn's going to cross over that line. And that is a major, usually lots of breakthroughs involving relationships, how you are in relationships. Sometimes it's um, the starting of new important relationships or the breaking up of important relationships or the drastic changing of, of relationships. Okay, so, so Venus is influencing the sixth house for everybody. We talked about the timeline there. Bringing harmony and peace into the workplace um, with pets and animals. There could be um, new pets coming in or time spent with animals. This can also have to do with money. It's an excellent time to ask for a raise, especially if you are in the mind frame for it. We always talk about this energy of asking for a raise. And this month is amazing for that, by the way. Trying to make more money, raising your rates, um, you know, anything involving money because Venus is in this place. And for some of you, you know, you've got Jupiter there too. So you can see early and middle, besides having the shorter term boost in the sixth from Venus, you also have longer term boost uh, from Jupiter. And you late degree placements, you don't have that Jupiter boost yet, but it's coming for you and you still have Venus there. So if you want to raise, just be really mindful of the place you're asking from. Anytime I'm talking about this for sixth house people or, or having something move through the sixth house, I always talk about the importance of what you're ask, why you're asking. So people usually ask for a raise either out of resentment, like I should, you know, like they're mad or they're desperate or they're just so sure that they're ready, that they're happy and they're asking from a place of already feeling full and like they deserve it. A lot of times the place that we ask from determines what the outcome is. So just, you know, even though the potentials are really great for this for you, just make sure you do the inner work around any resentment or not feeling good enough or not feeling worthy. I love emotional freedom technique tapping for this. You can find tapping for not feeling worthy, tapping for wanting to make more money. Um, you can do an online search for that. But just working on the inner space because that will change the outcome. Like if you say, I really should have more money and then you raise your rate and then nobody pays it, then you know that you're not a vibrational match for that. And you can use all of these, these energetic potentials that are going on now to do the inner work that can help you to be a vibrational match so that when you do raise it or ask for a raise, that it can come through. So a lot, a lot more peace and harmony wants to come in in your daily space. This can be anything that you do every day, office, home office, you know, wherever you are every day, it's your daily routine. So more harmony and more money. Okay, so that's a short-term potential for everybody. From the long-term perspective, some of the middle still and all of the late, you've got Saturn working here. So we talked about the Saturnian potentials. So things could be manifesting for the sixth house. The sixth house also has to do with health. So health, pets, diet, routine, regimen, work, workplace, self-employment. Um, so Saturn can bring some stodginess, challenges, pressure, or Saturn can bring fruition. And the difference usually turns out to be whatever your paradigm is, okay? If you were brought up in a situation where your parents said you can make money doing things you love, then probably you are. If you grew up in a situation where most people, where they said, doesn't mean you don't need to like what you do, you just need to make money. You're always going to be working, you have to, uh, whatever. Then that's probably what the situation is. I'm not blaming anybody. This is just what happens. We drew this in. But the sixth house story for middle and late degree of this Saturn, and of course Pluto's there too, working it, is changing the paradigm, like what you think, what you believe. When I was working for the pharmaceutical company in my first, you know, in my 20s, and I was like, ah, I was this way here. At first I was this way, but then I was this way. And I was like, I can't do this. I need to do I need to work for myself. So what I started doing was reading books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, um, books about affirmation where you can impress upon your subconscious mind 
new belief systems and I changed my belief system. And I'm telling you this because you can do this too. And this energy wants to put pressure on you to do this. You can change your belief system and then you can change your circumstances. Then when I was 29, I retired from working for other people and I won't tell you how long it's been, but it's been a really long time now (laughs) that I've been here. But it all has to do with what you think. So we can't just look to the astrological transits to, um, to save us. People do this, and I'm really trying to reframe this. You have to look to the astrological transits for potentials so that you can, and reflections, so that you can see where you're at. Then when you see where you're at, you know what you have to do to get to where you want to be. Okay, so Saturn has been doing that in the workplace, could be also, you know, challenges with pets, animals, health, having to restructure the inner realm so that you can experience health. A lot of, um, well, really all diseases have an emotional, mental, spiritual root cause. So seeking health through integrative healing may be the lesson there for a lot of people. So for those of you early and then now some of you middle degree placements that have had Saturn move on to the seventh house and You're also going to have the short-term influence of Venus kind of boosting win-wins, awesome potentials early and middle and then soon to come for late. Venus is going to bring some short-term boosts to the seventh house. But the long-term story here is about commitment and about evaluating relationship space. So early and middle definitely are in this, coming soon for later degree placements. You know, it's testing your relationships. It's seeing if they have what it takes to make it long-term. And if it's not, it's breaking them up. And if they do, it'll only make them stronger. It's also attracting in people of consequence. I call them POCs. Could be your life partner. Could be your life business partner. Could, you know, Saturn can draw into form a person that you will be bound to for a very long time. If you're having a lot of pressure and stress, there are belief systems, just a little diagram that we worked out with the money things. There are belief systems in your relationship space that have to get worked out. And that's what Saturn's putting pressure on. So in the short term, Venus can bring some nice boosts um, for early and middle and then soon for late of finding a win-win, finding a solution, harmony in relationships, money, you know, perfect practitioners, um, perfect clients, things like that. And in the long term, you're seeking to do the work to make your commitments deeper and more fulfilling. All right, so the sixth and seventh houses are really highlighted for you all. So these are the things most on my mind for cancer placements. Now I want to tell you the beautiful dates this month. February is one of my favorite months of the whole year for launches or for doing anything important or for making important purchases. So I want to give you the dates that I love um, and also some of the dates I'm a little concerned about that I want you to know about to be have extra care. So let's look at the general transits now. So the theme of the month for February 2019 for all signs is three times the sweetness. And that is because literally we have three times as many sweet aspects as we do challenging ones. In the beginning of January, we started these really nice open skies with the stars, you know, the planets moving direct. Uh, But January was... A little bit dicey in the way that we had two powerful eclipses and for some people those brought amazing positive changes for others very stressful changes and some people were just holding space for others as they went through the changes and some positive changes still could have carried some stress because of just the the newness of them you know trying to get into a new rhythm or having it come all of a sudden can carry its own kind of stress even if it's a very positive thing so February is going to have a totally different energy The open stars of having all the planets be direct is going to continue through February 18th. So we've got all that going on. And then, like I mentioned, we actually have a massive amount of sweet aspects. We do have a second supermoon that is at its first degree. So this whole energy of clean slate is continuing. And that's just a very, you know, major theme for all of 2019, actually, that's being initiated here at the beginning. I'm going to give you a list of the days that have sweet aspects and a list of the days that have challenging ones, and then we'll go into some more details. But definitely remember to go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, and sign up for my free email newsletter to receive a written version of these general transits 
delivered into your inbox a month early so that you have them visually for planning purposes. Okay, and if you are already on my new my email list and you're not getting my emails, then definitely check spam, social, events, folders, um, and move them into your inbox to get your inbox the message that you want them there. Okay, so the sweet days are going to be, let's just make a little list over here. And so the sweet days, these happy ones, are going to be the first, the second, the third, fourth, seventh, ninth, 17th, 18th, 19th, 22nd, 23rd, and 27th. Okay, the challenging ones, and as I give you these dates, remember that we often feel the energy of a transit before or after the actual transit, so don't hang your head to your hat too heavily on the exact date, just know that present or in the days around these days are the um, transits. Okay, so the challenging ones where we'll just kind of put a little guy having some difficulties there. Okay, so we have a challenging transit around the 1st, the 12th, the 14th, and the 22nd. And also in those days at the end of the month, there's um, on March 1st, there is a challenging aspect. So you might feel some of that in the days at the end of the month. But in general, you can see a lot more sweetness there. And when you track this over time, you can really see a difference like the, the mood of the month is very much directly affected by the amount uh, of sweet aspects we have versus challenging ones. Okay, so let's just do a little summary of some of the, the major ones here and then definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com to get um, a list of the rest and what you can experience with them. So on the 31st, I'm going to list the Saturn and Capricorn sextile Neptune and Pisces again. Okay, so let's see. Saturn there. Neptune there. Because as you can see, like here at the beginning of the month, they're only a degree apart. So that aspect to that beautiful 60 degree angle, it's one of the most favorable in astrology, is still going to be echoing out for many days, you know, even a couple of weeks, the first couple of weeks of um, February, you'll be feeling the sweet vibes from this sweet lineup. Whenever planets that are outer planets get together um, in any configuration, it, they last longer than the ones that move more quickly. Okay, so you'll be feeling those sweet vibes. And in general, this is characterized by material gains coming from spiritual focus and pursuits or artistic focus and pursuits. So kind of like a blending of the sides of the brain, <laughs> a blending of the seen and unseen. Okay, so the next thing around that time and this is one you really got to watch out for. Mars and Aries square Pluto and Capricorn. Okay, so we got Mars and Aries there. Pluto and Cap here. You can see they're at 21 degrees right from the beginning there. So they're matching. And that's a square. That's like a... No, we don't like that one as much. Now, it is true that challenging aspects can definitely spark something important. And for the seeker, we don't have to... Um, look negatively upon these challenging aspects because they could sometimes give us the catalyst that we need to do something, or it could be a conflict that sparks a breakthrough. But as far as like your general safety, definitely be careful around those days because it's just the kind of energy that could actually be dangerous. You know, you don't want to antagonize a crazy person in the beginning of the month there, you, you know, want to be careful with your physical body. You want to guard your head, guard your bones. Okay, so now we start the sweetness spree. Venus and Uranus getting together on January 2nd. I mean, sorry, February 2nd. So we've got Venus here. We have Uranus here. Okay, so this is going to move into configuration with this. Venus rules love, beauty, money, self-esteem, design projects. Uranus is the great awakener, the great bringer of surprises. So 
in the days before and after the second, sweet surprises are more likely. And of course, that's happening at the same time as that awkward, possibly dangerous aspect the day before. You know, that's why I always say we have to remember, like, these are layers of a truth that are happening all at once. And if you're trying to plan a launch or doing something important, your personal experience is going to outweigh any date something is, quote, supposed to be good. You know, you may feel the icky aspect earlier and then the nice one later. You know, you just got to tune in. But if you know what's going on, it helps you to follow these things. And I see it happen all the time that people who are sensitive, people who are empathic, people who are paying attention will tend to feel like, wow, something's up in the stars, you know? And so you have your answers here as to what's going on. Another sweet aspect on the third between Mercury and Jupiter where are the buddies? Okay, Mercury and Jupiter. I'm going to move into configuration there. So that is really great for anything important. Communication, mobility, important connections, travel could manifest in wonderful ways. Having to make important purchases for devices or cars. I love this energy for that. Then we've got the new moon at 15 degrees of Aquarius on February 4th. So lots of sweet energy there. This new moon is also in, in a conjunction with Mercury and a beautiful aspect with Jupiter, which enhances it. Then the sun, on the 7th, the sun is in a beautiful aspect with Jupiter. So whenever anything is in a nice aspect with Jupiter, it's like benevolence, good luck, sweetness. So the sun will move there. And then, of course, these will be together as well. So that could bring important news, important connections more sweetness and surprise, positive surprises on the 9th with Mercury and Uranus getting together. Um, the 12th and 13th, this is one of those times to watch because this is where Mars and Uranus get together in Aries. So both of those can be a little bit aggressive, can be a little bit jarring. Aries energy can be a little bit physically, um, you know, uh, could be dangerous. So just watch your body and Aries rules the head. So, you know, and again, just, you know, just don't antagonize crazy people. If you're driving, it's not the time to like make some sort of negative movement towards a driver that you don't like, <laughs> you know, and also things like not texting when you're walking, you know, just paying extra attention in the days around the 12th and 13th because tensions will be running higher. So I always say you can prepare for these kind of energies by trying to rest, get good sleep, be relaxed so that when they come, you can kind of just navigate through them as a spiritual ninja. I always use the example with, with aspects like this, like if you're a grandparent and you have your grandkids coming to visit, you could either leave out all your white linens and all your white stuff, you know, <laughs> only to have the kids destroy them because that's just what kids do when they're playing, right? Or you can swap them out for the kid-friendly things and then have a rest-free time so that when the chaos and madness comes, that all the things that you want to remain safe are and you don't have to stress about them. So that's what I always think about when there's an aspect like this. Like if you know some stress is coming and you just kind of like, you know, take your magnesium, take your B vitamins, you know, you just have your, your um, coherence, your coherence plan situated then it makes it much easier. Okay, so back to sunny skies and sweetness again with our little happy cloud there, with the 17th and 18th. We've got Venus and Capricorn making a beautiful aspect to Neptune in Pisces. And, okay, so let's show you where that is. We say there, Venus and Cap. Okay, so you can see here Venus is in Sag, but it's going to move into Capricorn by the, by the 17th and 18th. And that's going to make a nice aspect with Neptune here. Dreamy, creative, spiritual breakthroughs, things like that. And then the Sun in Aquarius is going to come together with Uranus at this point in a beautiful way. Okay, so that's later in the month when this joins into a configuration with this. But again, the 17th, 18th, just sweetness. I love it for important things, love, money, idealism, romance, art, creativity, expression of every kind, action, motivation, inspiration are just all enhanced beautifully at this time. And then the full moon, that second super moon of the year, super moon is a moon, 
that is actually closer to us. When you look at it, you're like, what? Why is the moon so big? <laughs> it's because it's closer. And of course, it exerts more gravitational effects when it's closer. So it tends to be more intense, more emotional. So do prepare for an extra emotional full moon. But for the most part, there are sweet aspects um, with this full moon. With zero, almost one degrees of Virgo on the 19th. So lots of wonderful things coming to fulfillment, fruition. Could be some drama. Some people experience um, negative drama at the full moons, but there is a lot of sweetness at this particular full moon. Moving along to the 22nd, we've got a square. That's one of our challenging aspect days. We've got a square with Mercury and Jupiter. And where are you guys? Okay, so Mercury is going to come and Jupiter is going to be in a square. Of course, Mercury is not going to be here at this point. It's going to move over there and that's where the square is going to happen. But, um, you know, communication, mobility, things like that kind of getting a little pressure from Jupiter. Even when Jupiter has kind of like a challenging aspect, it tends to manifest in a softer way than the rest of the outer planets. So I usually um, list like just exhaust, exhaustion for this one, like being overtired. And of course, if you're going, going, going because of all these sweet aspects and because you have this open window and because, you know, the Mercury retrograde shadow period is going to start on February 19th, which is true. <laughs> um, then you could be tired because you're trying to fit a lot in. And really, it is important to note that I love, love, love this month up until about the 18th or 19th. So we'll just say February 1st through the 19th, or we'll even just say the beginning of January. But since we're in February, we'll talk about this through the 19th here. Is some of my best favorite launch times in the whole year. You will have other opportunities, but... In April, Jupiter is going to go retrograde, and it's always nice to have Jupiter um, direct when you do important things. And then, of course, you know, we don't have as many retrograde issues as we did last year, but it really is good to take advantage of this time. I know that I'm planning to just, like, run it really hard until around this point and then just start to roll in the backdrop again. Okay, so another sweet aspect on the 23rd. Um, oh, actually on the 22nd, there's one that could go either way. Venus gets together with Pluto. So Venus will make it over here to connect with Pluto and that, you know, Pluto's intensity and Venus is love and money and self-esteem and things like that. So that could kind of go either way, some intense news or an intense experience with love or money. Could be an ego battle, something like that. Another sweet aspect on the 23rd, another sweet aspect on the 27th, and then on March 1st, we've got that square with uh, Venus and Uranus. It's going to come over. Of course, you can't see the square actually happening here now because Venus will have moved quite a bit, and that's when it will come into the square configuration, which is a challenge. You know, so those days at the end of the month, um, there could be, you know, love spats, money issues, things like that. But remember that when we're talking about aspects like with Venus, you know, usually it blows over in a couple of days. So it's not, it's not always a big deal. It might feel kind of stressful at the time. So these are the things that are most on my mind for the general transits, really sweet month full of awesome possibilities, amazing for launches moving forward, some of the best stars of the year for doing important things. So definitely go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. You can check out my blog. You can check out my astrology apprenticeship program if you love how I teach astrology and you'd like to learn for your own personal or professional purposes. If you'd love to be a coach as your profession and bring your business online, I can teach you how to do that. You can check out my coach certification and online business course also at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Definitely check out my new publishing company, Luminous Life Books and Beyond, along with my new book, Radical Prayer, Transform your life and the world in 28 days with these magical, powerful, super effective prayers and affirmations. So you can see that at AnnieHelpsYou.com along with 
all kinds of other goodies. If you'd love written horoscopes by me, you can check out my website, cozybysweetstarlight.com. At cozybysweetstarlight.com, I write written horoscopes often with different information than I share in the reports. And I always put those up a month early as well. And I've got all kinds of other lifestyle blogs written by me and other up and coming bloggers. If you are a traveler, you can check out my website, astrologykissedtravelbliss.com for astrology travel reports monthly. If you are going to travel, you can see what the stars are like for traveling. And I also have other blogs on there. And definitely check out my husband's website, iamhelios.com, I-A-M-H-E-L-I-O-S.com. He's always got new and different things on there, so you can check out his tarot offerings and he also does astrology readings as well. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye!